In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, many are those among you who have come to confession either yesterday or the days before, on occasions before, before you received communion. And I want you to reflect later on a very important point. The early church knew nothing of the private confession which we use nowadays. People came to confess, confess their sins to the whole community, to all their brothers and sisters in Christ, because it was felt, as it should be felt by us, it is very little perceived that when one member of the body sins, the whole body is wounded. That whatever sin I commit, commit soils and pollutes the whole body. And moreover, that whenever I commit a sin, against a brother, against a sister, indeed against myself, I, I, I am partaking in the crucifixion of Christ because he came into the world to save sinners and whoever is a sinner is to a greater or lesser extent responsible for the incarnation he accepted in order to die for us. And in the early church, people had an intense sense of community. And therefore, when sin was committed, it was confessed to all the community. And I know of two communities in the early days of the revolution, when two spiritual guides, whenever anyone wanted to make a confession, called together all their spiritual children, and the confession was made aloud before all in his presence, and standing there as the friend or the bridegroom, and endowed with the power to forgive or to bind, which was given by Christ to his disciples. And when the sinner had confessed his misdeeds, these this spiritual guides turned to the community and said, You have heard now. Are you prepared to carry the weight of his sin. Are you prepared to take him on as a beloved brother or sister? Are you aware that you are sharing with him his misery? If you are prepared to take him on wholeheartedly, completely, unreservedly, in the name of Christ, I can give him forgiveness. If you refuse to do this, I cannot do it, but also you will be answered before God for having rejected one for whom Christ had given his life. This was the early attitude of the church. Come to the whole community and open one's heart. And this was possible as long as the community was small as long as it was persecuted, as long as it was an act of heroism to be a member of the body of Christ. But when the church was recognized by the state, when there was no danger in belonging to it, moreover, when it was easy and advantageous to belong to it, then a confession of that kind became impossible because it was not received by people who considered the sin of their brother was their own 
sin and that had to carry one another's wounds and weaknesses. And therefore, individual confession was introduced. You have a certain experience of what this common confession can be at retreats, when the priest, having prayed with you, talked to you, was standing before God with you, makes allowed his own confession before God. You participate in his own confession and you can identify with him as he accepts to share with you his frailty, his sinfulness, and his need of forgiveness. This is a small approximation, but we must learn to share together the burden of one another's sins. I remember by hearsay the story of a Russian officer who came at a youth conference in the 20s and said to the priest in confession that he was in a position to mention all the sins he had committed but his heart was of ice and of stone, and he had no feeling about it. He could give a list, but not shed a tear. And this priest, Father Alexander Yelchenyinov, commanded him not to make his confession to him, but the next morning, when the liturgy would be celebrated, to come out before the liturgy, and to all the youth conference assembled there to make the confession he intended to make to the priest. And this man, feeling the desperate need of his resurrection from the dead, because he was dead at heart, came out, explained what he was about to do. He expected that everyone would move away from him in horror, instead of which he felt that all the conference moved towards him in compassion, in sympathy, in oneness. He began to speak his confession, and his heart broke, and he burst into tears, and he was redeemed. And therefore, when we come to confession, let us not be content to come to the priest and to speak in his presence to the Lord Jesus Christ who stands there with the wounds of the crucifixion to which we have added our own. But let us turn to everyone who we may have offended individually between our last confession, or perhaps a long, long time before, open our heart, tell the truth, obtain forgiveness for our victim, heal that limb of the body of Christ which we have wounded at time almost mortally, and then only come to the priest and confess our sins to the Lord Jesus Christ who stands crucified and obtain from the priest in his name forgiveness of the sins for which we have truly repented. Amen. Благословение Господне на вас, того благодатью и человеколюбием всегда, ныне и присно и во веки веков.
воскресы из мертвых Христос, истинный Бог наш, молитв ради Пречистой Своей Матери, святых славных и всехвальных апостол, и же всех отца нашего Иоанна, архиепископа, Константинопольского Златоустова, преподобных и богоносных отец наших, Сергия, Игумена Радонежского и всей России чудотворца, и Серафима, Саровского чудотворца, священномученика власти Севастийского, святителя Стефана Сурожского, Павла Цареградского, Григория Неокестарийского, Никиты Новгородского, Тихона Задонского, святых и праведный Богу Отец Иоакима и Анны, всех святых в земли сей и в земли нашей просиявших, святого Тихона, патриарха Московского и вся Руси, и всех святых, помилует и спасет нас, яко благ и человеколюбец.